I feel like the books I bought this month can be split up into three very distinct categories. Pre-orders, special editions of books that I already have copies of, and books that I picked up and have no idea if I'll ever read, but you know what, I just wanted to buy them anyway. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Koya, welcome back to my channel, thank you for being here today. Today's video is my October book haul. I could not think of what the title for this video was going to be then, but yes, it is all the books that I acquired during the month of October. Like I said, these do definitely split up into different categories and normally I sort of go through these in the order that I hold them but I think I'm going to break this up a little bit differently today because I wouldn't say that there's some like strange decisions on here necessarily but there is also like one that I bought earlier in the month and I'm looking at it like I don't know if I'm ever going to read this but I bought it I have it now let's see what happens so without further ado I'm not going to ramble too much more I'm just going to tell you about all the books that I bought in October let's start off actually with the category that I kind of forgot about as well which is books that I have either already read or are definitely planning on reading because they are continuations of series I am already in the middle of. So the first one I've actually already read, I read it in October, I have literally just finished filming my October wrap-up and it's the last book that I read in October and that was The X-Hex by Erin Sterling. So this one is about a girl called Vive who is a witch and basically she ends up having a bad breakup after a sort of three-month whirlwind love affair with a guy called Reese. She ends up doing a curse on him with her cousin in order to help her get through the breakup and she thinks it's a bit of a joke, she does it with a Bath and Body Works candle. And then nine years later, when he comes back, his family founded the town that she lives in and he's come back to charge the ley lines. When he gets back, she realises that actually this curse may have had a little bit of a stronger effect than she thought it did. And it all kind of goes from there. I am not, I was about to go give you my thoughts on this book, but I realised this is not a wrap up. This is a haul. I will say that I enjoyed this book. Like I said, I already read it and very much enjoyed it. Full thoughts in my wrap-up video. Next up is one where I have already started the series, well kind of because this is technically a new series in and of itself, and that is Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. I picked this one up because it was free. I had a £10 uh, voucher on my Waterstones card, so I used that to buy this because I had just finished, or was just about to finish, Assassin's Quest and knew that I wanted to carry on with the live ship traders. So this is the fourth book in the whole of the realm of the eldlings but it's the first book in the second trilogy and basically this is set in area sort of separate to the six duchies in the Valsia trilogy and it is about fam it's about ships that come to life basically there are these ships that are owned by families and when three generations of a family have died on the ship the ships end up sort of coming to life and having sentience and yeah I am actually reading this at the minute so I can't tell you too much more else about it and I don't really want to because I'm trying not to read too much of the synopsis but very excited to carry on with this. This is the series that a lot of people sort of fell in love with Robin Hobbs writing from. I personally really enjoyed the Farsia trilogy, so if I really enjoyed that and this is the one people liked more, I'm very excited about how much I'm going to enjoy this one. And then next on to series I'm continuing on with, this is one that I actually bought after reading sort of the first 50 pages in the first book of the series and deciding that yes, I would like to carry on with it and that is Flashfire by TJ Klune. So this is the second book following on from The Extraordinaries and basically it is about a world where there are superheroes or supervillains, I suppose they could be, basically people with special powers. The main character is a little bit obsessed with the extraordinaries he writes fan fiction about them and in the first book his life ends up kind of getting pulled into that world and it's just about what happens from there and I very much enjoyed the first one I gave it four stars so happy to carry on with the second one as well. Next up I'm going to move on to a couple of pre-orders I had and these are both sort of continuations of series as well. One of them that I know I'm going to read soon the other one that I kind of pre-ordered and I'm not even sure if I want to read it anymore but I own it now. We're going to start with the one that I know I want to read soon and that is The Christmas Horus and the Naughty List by Tom Fletcher. This book is blinding the camera. But yeah, Tom Fletcher is a children's author but he's also in the band McFly and he's on Strictly Come Dancing at the minute and I'm a pretty big fan of Tom Fletcher and I have read all of his Christmas Horus books so far. I've also got The Creakers but haven't read it yet 
and I also own Eve of Man but I haven't read that yet but Christmas Horus is the series of his I am up to date with. It's a cute story about a boy in a wheelchair and this creature called Christmas Horus who is a Christmas dinosaur who he ends up meeting in the first book and it's just about their adventures that they go on together. I believe in this one William the main character ends up finding himself on the naughty list and is not entirely sure why so him and the Christmas Horus decide to help William and other kids get off of the naughty list because everyone deserves a gift at Christmas. So these books are like proper children's books and not just like sort of like they're not like middle grade like for like 12 year olds these are kids books I think they're aimed at like five to nine year olds maybe and the writing is like that sort of writing where it is very big on the page and yeah very very easy to read so I expect to be able to read this in pretty much one day it there is also some like stunning illustrations in this I mean look at the actual like naked hardcover I love it so I'll be reading this one in December because Christmas obviously but yes I will be getting around to this one soon. The other pre-order that I have is the one that I'm not entirely sure if, when I'm going to read or if I'm going to read it but I pre-ordered it earlier on in the year and then kind of forgot that it was arriving and that is Aristotle and Dante Dive Into the Water of the World. So this is a sequel to Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe which is a book I read many years ago and remember very very much enjoying at the time. I do know that recently because there is a film adaptation of it coming out there has been a lot of discussion about it online and there's been a lot of things about sort of like transphobia and stuff in the book and I don't remember that being in there but also I did read it a long time ago now we're talking sort of years ago and yeah I don't remember exactly what it was that happened in there but I know that the author is also sort of like dead named the director of the film version recently which is a little bit strange and yeah I don't know I don't know when I will get around to reading this like I said I did very much enjoy the first book at the time of reading it but it has been a while now and I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it I don't know if I would have got this like I said I just kind of forgot I had pre-ordered it so it's here now we'll see what happens I'll put it on my shelf I may never end up picking it up speaking of books I'm not sure if I'm gonna pick up I have got next up I've got two books that I picked up in a bookstore that I want to read but also don't want to read at the same time but they were both on buy one get one half price so I'm like you know what I'm just gonna buy them both and hopefully I'll read them at some point. First in that category being Defy the Night by Bridget Camera. I've still even got the buy one get one half price sticker on here I'm gonna have to take that off because that's gonna bug me. There's also a Waterstones exclusive sticker. Thanks for telling me that you are Waterstones exclusive I don't need that stuck to the front of my book for the rest of time. There we go that's better. So this one I was heavily influenced in buying this book by two people. Their names are Becca and Liv. I will link both their channels down below. I was, I think, on sprints with them at one point where one of them was reading this book. I may have been Becca. And I don't know what this book is about. I'm going to have to read you the synopsis. I have read A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer and I enjoyed it, but I didn't have any sort of impulse to pick up the rest of the series. I feel like the ending of it just didn't make me want to carry on with the story and I had no intention of picking this one up but then yeah both of those two kept going on about it and I was like I'm gonna have to see why I'm gonna have to see what sort of the hype that they're creating is about so I picked it up while it was on by we got on a half price I'll read you the back in a kingdom where sickness stalks the streets and only the richest can afford a cure, King Coriston and his brother Prince Corrick are forced to rule the Iron Fist. Tessa Cade is a masked outlaw marked for death, but she likes it that way. Together with the mysterious handsome Weston, she robs from the rich to help the poor, distributing medicine to those who need it most. As it becomes clear that the only way to save her people is to assassinate the king, Tessa faces a deadly mission that will take her to the dark heart of the kingdom and force her to work with the very people she intended to destroy. I don't know. It sounds interesting. I feel like the synopsis I've heard of this before is maybe the one that's on the fairy loot version sounds different from that so I feel like I know more from that one than I do from this one or maybe it's the other way around but yeah I honestly don't really know what this book is about but I was drawn in by the love for it that Becca and Liv have so I'm blaming those two. I also still have the Bow and Get on Half Price sticker on this next book so I'm just going to take that off while I'm talking to you. There we go. So the next book that I bought also on the offer was After Love by Tanya Bird. This one was in the last Fairy Loot box I believe but I was not subscribed to Fairy Loot at the time. I may be subscribed to Fairy Loot now so exciting times coming up but 
this one again i'm going to read you the synopsis because i'm not the best at explaining this so it says car headlights the last thing ash hears is a snap of breaking glass as a windscreen hits her and shatters into a million pieces like stars but she made it she's still here or is she this new year's eve ash gets an invitation from the afterlife she can't decline to join a clan of fierce girl reapers who take the souls of the city's dead to await their fate but ash can't forget her first love poppy and she will do anything to see her again even if it means they only get a few more days together dead or alive I actually think this sounds quite interesting i don't know why i'm not sure if i'm gonna read it it's just kind of one that i read the synopsis and i think okay but then also i don't kind of think about it afterwards but i bought it anyway we will see if i read it and yeah it's about all i can say about this one to be honest i actually had to go and grab this next one out of my luma crate because i realized i never actually unpacked that when it arrived last week so the next one that i have is the October Illumicrate book which is Iron Widow by Zirin J Zhao and this one I will just show off because I haven't done an unboxing for the Illumicrate this month so I'm just going to show what it looks like. I believe this is pretty much the standard cover and then we have these edges which I know people are annoyed because it isn't on the top and bottom which I don't understand but underneath we do have this very annoyingly off-centre quote but then we do have some beautiful under dust jacket artwork so again i have no idea what this one is about this is actually one that i kept seeing in bookstores and thinking i maybe want to get that because the cover looks interesting but then never picking up and realizing there's a and going there's a reason why i'm not buying that and then realizing it's because it was coming in a lumicrate so let me just read you the synopsis again it says you've been living a dream for long enough welcome to your nightmare the boys of, of the boys of huaxia dream of the celebrity status that comes with piloting chrysalises giant transforming robots that battle the aliens beyond the great wall their female co-pilots are expected to serve as concubines and sacrifice their lives when an 18 year old Daytan offers herself up as a concubine pilot her plan in her plan is to assassinate the ace male pilot responsible for her sister's death but on miraculously emerging from the cockpit unscathed after her first battle she is declared an iron widow the most feared pilot of all now that Zaytan has a taste for power she sets her sights on bigger things the time has come to stop more girls from being sacrificed so it's a handmaid's tale meets pacific rim now i, I will not really get in sci-fi from this cover to be honest but i'm not a massive sci-fi reader but i also am intrigued by this so we will see again like this is a section of books where i'm just like i'm not sure if i'm ever gonna read this but it's there so we've got four books left to talk about three of them are all by the same author so they're all special editions of books i already own so these ones should be fairly easy to give you a synopsis of at least so the first one being the special edition of they both die at the end by evan silvera so again still has a sticker on the front of it that i don't like worse than a sticker being on a book is a sticker that's difficult to remove right so this is a special edition of they both die at the end by adam silvera this i believe got made because this one got a lot of hype on tiktok this year and has become very very popular so they've done a special edition um the special edition the special things about it i believe is that it is a hardback it's a naked hardcover it also does have some in some extra content at the back i believe there is actually a bit about sort of it becoming a tiktok sensation which is mm, still a little bit cringe but i do very much enjoy this book so i did want the special edition of it it's basically about a world where on the day that you're going to die you get a call from something called death cast that tells you you're going to die at some point today they don't tell you how they don't tell you when it's just letting you know say your goodbyes this is it and it's about two characters who end up using this social media app in order to sort of connect on their last day and then a romance ensues and I very much enjoyed this book if you want to know my full thoughts about this i've recently done a video where i rank all of adam solvera's books so this one is also a signed copy i find it a bit strange actually it's signed i don't know if you can see it's almost like in biro on the front end paper but then it's also signed on the back one i don't know if it's supposed to be signed twice or if i've just sort of fallen lucky but yeah we have this one and it's not my favorite special edition i've ever got like it's not the most fancy but I still appreciate having it. We're going to get onto some fancy special editions in a minute though. So my next books to haul is actually one of them I already had, but I wanted to show you the sort of complete series all together. And that is the Illumicrate editions of the Dark Shade of Magic trilogy. And yeah, basically I already had this one. This one came last year in a box that they did. And then you could pre-order the second and the third one, but there were delays to do with the sprayed edges. Basically, originally they were all supposed to have the same colour as the first one and then when they got to them they 
were lighter than they were supposed to be then they decided that they were going to do like a so they didn't have to reprint all of them they were going to do like different shades so it's going to represent the different londons in this series so it's going to be that this one was grey london then we were going to have the lighter one was going to be white london the books themselves were going to be red london because they've all got red on them and then the last one was going to be sprayed matte black and that was going to be black london then when they arrived they were actually one of the last one was sprayed the same colour as the first one even though they told them that that was impossible to do basically i should have got these months ago but I'm happy to finally actually have the set. So you got the dust jackets with the original book box. So the actual covers themselves are just these are naked hardback special collector's editions that have been out in the UK before. But yeah, I'm going to actually, I'll put this one down because you've already seen this one. So we've got Gathering of Shadows, which has got Alucard and Lila on it. You can actually have these jackets either way. So the writing on it works either way which is really cool i chose to put my favorite character on the front so i put alucard on there because i love him so much and underneath here we have got this which i believe is lila and then we have got end paper art as well which is again lila and alucard but it's the same on the back so i won't show it you again and they are all signed as well which is another reason why they didn't want to have to reprint them because they would have had to have got me to sign even more of them and then we have got a conjuring of light so we've got rye got holland writing like i said works both ways and yeah the end papers in this one are sprayed the sort of silvery color i didn't show you the end papers in the last one but it was this lighter color so actually when you have them all lined up i quite like it you've got the two silver and then the one lighter in the middle and that's the end paper or on this one so yeah i know there was some discussion about these because people were some people were disappointed obviously with the delays and things like that some people were just disappointed because we were told different colors and things and so what we got was different than what we expected but i actually think that they turned out really well i like the silver and the lighter one in the middle i also really appreciate illumicrate for keeping us up to date throughout all of it because I can imagine that it was stressful for them but they were very very helpful in keeping us up to date on what was happening throughout the entire situation so very impressed with the customer service on that and i'm glad that i now finally have them and then my last book to haul is also a special edition the schwab and it is the anniversary edition of the invisible life of adi larue now i don't know why we need an anniversary edition for the first anniversary of a book but I'm not going to complain when I get an extra copy of my favourite book on my shelf. I like This is one of my favourite books of all time. So this is the new anniversary edition. So as you can see, it's got a white cover to it this time. The original one is, I believe, a black cover with sort of blue flowers on it. I don't have that one. I have the Illumicrate one, which is black and white. So I quite like this because this is sort of white and grey. So it's like the opposite way around. We also have sprayed edges, which has got the forget-me-nots on it. And this one actually has got grey on the top and bottom as well so it matches it's got an embossed cover and paper art there's also sort of art all the way through it as well signed again yeah there's like fan art all the way through it but then also in the middle there is a section that is full color glossy art i actually have that one it came in the lumicrate originally and it is somewhere just behind me actually it's just up there it's just up here so i have that one on my shelves already it's one of my favorite pieces so yeah we've just got lots of fan art and things inside it and yeah i don't think we needed an anniversary edition of this book but i'm not going to complain about having it so it's one of those months where i physically can't hold everything in shot to show you how many books i got but it's all these yeah they literally physically will not fit that's a lot of books so i did not realize it was this much because i'd put them on i have my tbr cart i have a shelf that is all for books i've hauled but some of these i already put on my shelf the special editions i'd already put on my shelves and then some of them were also like on my tbr so i didn't put them all in that section and i didn't realize quite how many i got but in my defense a lot of these were pre-orders and a lot of them were special editions i ordered months ago so I've also like just worked out my pre-orders though and I know that I'm gonna have a lot of books in November as well so yeah 
anyway thank you guys for watching please like comment subscribe all that good stuff down below and let me know did you buy a lot of books in october as well please tell me i'm not on my own in this but yeah thank you guys for watching i'll see you soon with a new video bye